infrastructure is crumbling and the problems are only getting worse. The pressure to find solutions is hot. Let's talk about why American cities have no water, no electricity, and no money to fix their infrastructure problems. Welcome to the Infrastructure Hot Seat Podcast, hosted by Chad Smelter. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Infrastructure Hot Seat Podcast. My name is Chad Smeltzer. I am your host. Today's guest is Stephanie Boyce, who's the Public Works Director at Mission Kansas. Thanks for joining me, Stephanie. Well, thank you for having me. This is fun and exciting. I tell you what, we tried to do this last Friday. It didn't go well. So today, it, it seems a lot better on our internet connections, and I'm excited to learn more about you and and how you got into public works. And you have a unique story because you were a school teacher and you became a public works director. So let's start there. You know, your journey into becoming a public works director, you know, that's let's, let's start there. Sure. I think a lot of people enter local government kind of knowing what they want to do. You know, they're, you're either an engineer or a planner or something along that line. And I went to school to be a, an elementary teacher and I went through the program, got my teaching credential, started substitute teaching and the market wasn't great for teachers at the time and substitute teaching was a little unstable, not knowing where you're going to go and you don't get sick or vacation. And so I just needed some stability and consistency. And there was a job position open for the city that I lived in, which was two blocks from my house. And I applied for it almost 17 years ago. This was just small city outside of San Diego. And I got the call back and interviewed and they hired me as the public works secretary. Um, and that was the beginning of, of my career. I served 12 and a half years in Lemon Grove, small city, um, and just started learning as I went, what jumped in. And, you know, I, I had great supervisors too, who really um, were able to trust me to do extra things. And, you know, as I was moving on, I realized my capacity to do more and learn more um, was really kind of a driving force to take on extra projects. So I think, you know, it was just a combination of me wanting to learn more and a combination of bosses needing help and that support that just kind of put me on a trajectory upwards. And so within, you know, 12 and a half years in Lemon Grove, I had several promotions, which was always exciting. And then kind of at the end, my family and I decided we wanted to relocate and just try something new. And a position as a right-of-way manager brought me out to Kansas City metro area and started working for a city out here and you know, organizational changes happen. And that took me to Raytown, another small city in the Kansas City metro area as the deputy director. And, you know, another position came open in mission. And I thought, I think I have the capacity to take that on. And again, I've made a great network out here. I had some really great support, support friends out here that really just um, had my back and encouraged me to apply for this job. So I took the leap of faith and reached out to the city manager and asked her if we can talk about, you know, the challenges, the needs and, you know, what they were looking for in a director. And that led to a two hour lunch conversation. And later on, I applied, interviewed and the rest is history. So here I am in Mission, Kansas. Um, Been here just over a month. So still learning and Learning the people, learning the city, and trying to get out there when I can just to see what's going on. and Yeah, just getting acclimated to the whole area, I'm sure, and everything in the processes that are that are happening there in Mission. Now, in Lemon, Lemon Grove, let's go back, you know, being a public works secretary for, what, 11, 12 years, you said? Well, I started as the secretary yeah, and then promoted within there to engineering tech one, two, three. <clears throat> later on, later on to a senior management or a management analyst, and then later on to the senior management analyst position. So those are usually kind of middle manage middle management jobs where you start working with a CIP and the budget and doing more analysis on on certain things within the department. Although in, in a small city, you have the challenges, of, you know, staffing and shortages, and so you wear a lot of hats when you work in a small city and. And I contribute that to my success is just being exposed to so much, not just doing one thing and one thing only. So, so just so I understand a little bit more, that you went from the school teacher into the, the secretary role, right? Yep. 
And then you started working your way up and learning and learning and learning more about stuff. But you had that unique uh, action being a secretary as a public works in, in public works. So you got to see all the transactions basically that happen. Yeah. Yeah. You get to, you get to deal with, um, with the good and the bad, you know, you're kind of that liaison and go to with the public <clears throat> to everything else that's going on in the department. So yeah, you get, you get to dabble in a little bit of everything from helping someone find their sewer line or their property lines. <clears throat> you know, or how to complete a right-of-way permit, or what do you need to do for land development, you know, or how do you get a grading permit, those types of things. So really, again, a lot of exposure to a little bit of everything. And that's super important for your role now. I mean, literally, you were building yourself up for this position that you're in now as the, you know, public works director of the mission, Kansas, where you're at. And then what what's unique about it is, is, you as the secretary, you really the way I would envision it is you just got to see all the ins and outs of everything. So it really gave you an understanding of how everything worked. And then you started adding your education on top of that. So you start building education on top of experience, which is huge in gaining that that knowledge and experience, right? To to move up and, and really help get those things. Yeah. So any chance I had for professional development um, or taking any kind of classes or courses, I jumped into. In Southern California, there's a great program um, called Municipal Management Association of Southern California. And it's really just to help those middle managers, management analysts, administrative analysts um, to kind of grow their career. A lot of them move into assistant to city manager, assistant city managers, eventually city managers. And so that organization played a good role in networking, meeting people, definitely professional development. I joined um, the planning committee for the San Diego region. And so we were able to plan those networking events, plan those professional developments. And that really just helped me to learn a lot about local government, maybe not necessarily public works, but just the inner workings of local government, leadership, you know, the role of, of a leader in, in government. So that was really great too. Um, and then further along in my career, APWA has been um, great resource too for training, learning. You know, I really tapped into APWA when I when I moved to Kansas City, and uh, give a little shout out to Katie, um, who kind of volunteered me to sit on a committee for the facilities and grounds at met the Kansas City Metro, and that's kind of helped put me on a trajectory too to making those networks, um, meeting new people, uh, being out there, and again just being immersed in it and learning and seeing and doing. And so now uh, I was elected to the <clears throat> executive committee for the Kansas City Metro chapter here with some great, great people who help run a wonderful chapter of APWA. I think we have a really strong chapter out here. So again, it's just being there, learning, doing, seeing, and making those connections and then sharing ideas. I mean, there's no reason to reinvent something if it's already out there. And so these organizations really help help us and especially smaller agencies like Mission <clears throat> share ideas, share those, um, you know, RFPs, RFQs, um, borrowing those from other agencies and then making them your own. I'm I and people will tell you this. I'm always happy to share information of something that we've done with other people so that they don't have to recreate it or they have some sort of base that they can jump off of and, and kind of make it their own. So yeah, no reason to reinvent the wheel, right? That's the biggest thing. If you had to look at things as far as in your position, what was some of the struggles of you moving up in that role? Because obviously you didn't have that field experience like a lot of the operators do, right? So I'm sure there had to be some challenges there with that. Can you elaborate a little bit more on some of those struggles that you went over and overcome? Struggles? Yeah. You know, it, it takes time um, when you're growing your career. And so, again, it's just it's I think being patient. I think it's finding <clears throat> finding that drive just to want to do it, um, being motivated to learn something new. 
Um, so it's, you know, a lot of times people want to get from point A to point B in their career immediately, but it definitely takes time. You know, I would, I applied for some higher level positions and was rejected and, and that can hurt sometimes. And it's either because A, I didn't have the experience. And so just being patient, growing yourself professionally, you know, learning about yourself too. I think that's one thing <clears throat> that as a leader, you know, it's you have to learn about yourself in order to project and help others grow. So there, you know, there's a lot of challenges. I would definitely say time, <clears throat> just slow down, take that time, um, uh, lean on the people that are there to support you. Like I said, I've had so many wonderful people who just sometimes had more belief in me than I had in myself. Sometimes we don't have that confidence and we think, oh, I don't know if I, you know, if I'm qualified for this. You know, funny story, when I applied for the position in Independence, Missouri, I got a call back from the team that interviewed me and said, you know, you're overqualified for this position, but we have another one that we'd like to offer you. Is that something you're interested in? I'm like, okay, wow, yeah. And ironically, that same position was open like a year prior. And I looked at it and I thought, I don't have all the qualifications, so I'm not going to apply for it. And I didn't. And here a year later, they're offering me this position. And so I think too, just having confidence that even though you don't have 100% of those qualifications, sometimes agencies aren't hiring for the qualifications, but more for the character and the personality of a person. Because I think you can always learn other skills. So yeah, confidence is a big one and just running with it. So so if you had to describe one of the things that you, you know, I keep going back to challenges because there's, you know, nothing's ever easy, right? I mean, it's not. I mean, I'm not trying to bring up a negative thing or nothing like that. I just... I don't, you, we just have to understand that like public works, is not hard. You have people that work at 2 a.m., you know, doing water rain breaks, things like that. You got to be up ready and hands on deck all the time, you know, sometimes. And, you know, has there ever been moments like that where you're just like, wow, this is like a lot? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Especially in the smaller cities. I mean, I think one of the challenges that local government faces, whether it's in Kansas City or San Diego or Texas right now is workforce shortages. You know, in the last almost four years, we've done so much to try to get people in these positions, but also to retain the people that we have. And so in multiple organizations um, that I've worked for, you know, you have those salary surveys where you're trying to increase the salary retention bonuses, referral bonuses, just any kind of incentives. In local government, they're going to probably be incentive, not bonuses, but anything that you can do to pull people in. So yeah, I mean, just having the staff on hand is rough. When I was in Raytown, we worked really hard to pass um, a snow incentive for um, for our frontline workers who have to be on call for four months out of the year to push a snow plow so that they can make the streets safe. For those who have to get to work, not everybody has the luxury of staying home and working remotely. So someone's got to be out there plowing snow. And so it was it was unanimously approved by the Board of Aldermen because these guys and gals are out there again for four or five months out of the year on call, not really able to take vacation or time with their families. Um, so that's like one of the big, one of the bigger challenges. And then budget constraints are another challenge that local governments face. People sometimes have that mentality, well, I pay your salary, but they don't realize such little, that little percent is going to public works or community development or finance department. So there's budget constraints because we have so many streets that might be backlogged for maintenance that we just can't get to. And recently, Mission had the voters approved a renewal of a tax, a dedicated street tax in 2021. And so that's just helped increase our funding 
um, to do some uh, street preservation. And the focus here is not just to do a mill and overlay, but it's to do the full depth reconstruction. And so those projects are significantly more expensive than just mill and overlay. Right. So there's a big investment here in Mission to try to get all our streets in good shape, in great shape. So slowly we're getting there. Yeah, it's a, it's, just, it's a tough world out there right now. Uh, water main breaks, PFAS, lead. <laughs> I mean, anything and everything is is going against utilities right now, for especially water, I think, it seems like. And uh, yeah, how are you handling some of that stuff with water quality and things? Well, uh, Mission doesn't, we don't have water here and we don't have wastewater. So Johnson County, Johnson County does our wastewater um, and they're great. And then Water One services are our water here. Um, and they're also doing a lot of projects. They're, they've been really good to work with and, and making any kind of repairs and upgrades before we go in. And make these, you know, these full depth reconstructions because the last thing we want to do is reconstruct a street and then have a utility come in um, and cut it open to replace something. So, so there's a, there has to be that coordination between the city and the utility agencies. Um, so definitely communication to let them know what we're doing in the future so that they can also plan um, around that too. So we have um, our 2024 street project is out to bid right now, but before our utility agencies are out there right now, moving their utilities and making changes to those before we put, before we start doing that project. So got it. Yeah, it's a it's a dance we have to uh, we have to dance. When you said when you said dig up the street, the first thing I thought I was like, wow, I know there's under you got to evaluate these underground utilities because they don't want those to fail before obviously reconstruct the road. Then you got to re dig it up if you got to repair those broken pipes and stuff. That's what I was thinking of. But but when it comes to let's talk about roads. I mean, pavement preservation, right? I mean, it's a, it's it's one of those things where there's all different types of applications to preserve pavement from what I understand. And I'm not a road guy, but I I see so many different types of technology for inspection of roads and repairs of roads and things like that. What are some of those things that, that are available? Yeah. Well, and and I should have prefaced this by saying I'm not an engineer. Right. Um, and so my technical side isn't that strong. And our superintendent here is great. He he leads a lot of that inspection and um, our street projects. He'd probably be a better one to ask. But uh, yeah, we, so there are some of the treatments out there like the chip seal, which is, is the, the less expensive version. That's not a preferred, a preferred treatment here. Again, we're doing the full depth reconstruction. So we're, we're going down nine inches or so, and then we're filling that base and then overlaying with asphalt. Another one that's been used frequently here and in Raytown is the U-Bass. That seems to be um, something It's like ultra bonded asphalt. That seems to be one that is popular and less expensive and seems to have a longer a longer time. We do a lot of crack sealing here too, in house. Our guys um, go out and and crack seal, and then they're out. You're in the Midwest. We had those couple weeks of like really cold weather, the freezing, and then the thawing, and so that just led to a bunch of potholes. So our team's been out diligently um, filling potholes and just making sure that our uh, our citizens have. A smooth surface to drive on right now until we until we hit the spring and summer and it warms up and make it more permanent. I was gonna, yeah, I was gonna uh, kind of talk about budgets, budgets and um, procurement, things like that. How, how how have you experienced a lot of those things? Because it's it's a constant thing you have to do. Yeah, it, again, that's one of the challenges that we face is you get X amount of dollars to do, you know, to put towards your, your street repair and you work with your, with your engineers and the designers and you get your cost estimates and you try to get them within that budget. Um, but recently over the last couple of years, you see prices have gone up. And so you have to make those decisions of where can I scale back to either increase, 
increase our street preservation? Do we not do striping this year? Do we take it from another pot of money? And so it's always just the playing those games of what can we do without for this next year? How can we move money around um, to put more into this pot? So it's, it's, it's a challenge. Uh, again, in 2021, um, our voters did approve a renewal of a dedicated street tax. So that's really nice. And that helps fund our street preservation. But again, these reconstruction projects, uh, you know, we're doing less lane miles and it's costing more because we're doing the full depth. And then along with that, we're also doing sidewalks and curbs and ADA ramps. Sometimes we'll throw some street lights in there if there's a need and then stormwater too. So trying to hit everything um, in that project. The Johnson County has a lot of funding as well. So if a road is on a certain, um, a certain roads will qualify for what they call the cars funding. So we do get additional funding from Johnson County. And then there are other funding sources out there that we try to leverage whenever we can. So City of Mission was um, granted a $6 million grant uh, surface transportation funds um, for a 2026 project. And so that's going to reconstruct Johnson Drive, which is one of our main thoroughfares. That would be phase two. And so that's a $12 million project. So we have about $6 million in funding for that. So we try to leverage um, any kind of opportunity for grant funding that we can, as I'm sure most agent, you know, local agencies are are doing, you know, but it's very competitive. So you are competing with many other agencies in this, in this area, you know, for that funding. So any way we can get creative and find those additional funds, we, we will try. Now that you just got, you know, you you're, you're- in mission now, and you just been there for a little over a month. What does the future look like uh, that you've seen, or you've kind of feel like you're going to be able to, you know, improve upon there? Yeah, I would say just continuing forward with our street preservation and and getting those roads that are in you know poor and fair shape into good and excellent condition on that um, you know pavement condition index. And that's going to take time and it's going to take money. You know, in the meantime, we try to do what we can in-house, any kind of dig out and repairs that our team can do. And then um, we have a lot of sustainability projects that are going on. Mission is really good, really big on the sustainability. So we have some really exciting projects um, that are grant funded also. So we have a bike share project that um, we apply for and receive funding for uh, and Roland Park, which is our neighboring city. So that project is going to bring 50 bikes between the two cities, e-bikes, and bike clubs, wayfinding signs, um, and some LED lights for those signs. Um, so it's a bike share program. Um, total, I want to say it's like $500,000 in grant funding. And that also includes five years worth of maintenance. So wow, that's that's actually really nice. Yeah, so that will be exciting. The e-bikes are starting to become a big thing out here, and they're all are in the surrounding area at a bu- many of the Johnson County parks um, that are surround us. So um, that will be, I think, a treat. City of Mission uh, is pretty walkable, and we have a transportation hub here. And so adding those bikes, if they want to, you know, go to one of our neighboring cities and have lunch or just ride around the city, they have that option of those e-bikes. We also received a grant for safe uh, streets and roads for all, and that's um, going to help fund a um, traffic safety action plan. So that will look at collision data and street conditions and kind of analyze that for safety and then prepare a plan of different strategies. So whether it's traffic calming, roundabouts, uh, you know, addition of pedestrian crosswalks, that will help lay out a foundation for future safety improvements within the city. And then one more, um, one more grant that we just received was for Operation Greenlight. That's a program here in the Kansas City Metro uh, that 
has a network of communication so that the traffic signals talk to each other. So you can kind of have that smooth flow and you hit all those green lights. But we received a grant um, to add that equipment to six traffic signals along Johnson Drive. So it's a two mile stretch. Nice. Um, so we're actively working on that. So, and then I believe we'll probably be getting electric vehicle chargers here in the near future. So a lot of sustainability and and green projects going on. Very cool. Very cool. So um, we got one more minute left. If you had to talk about um, thing else for the future, what does it look like for my future or for? The- you not your future but for the future of where mission is going to go what the you know what the goals are you know stuff like that yeah i think sustainability is one of those big goals that our council really is looking upon definitely want to make it a safe walkable um, inviting city for all and there is a lot to do here lots of great restaurants and small shops so it's definitely enhancing um, enhancing those roads enhancing the sick and the safety for our citizens, visitors, residents, staff. Pretty much everybody. Well, how can people get a hold of you, Stephanie? They can email me. Uh, my email is sboyce, B-O-Y-C-E, org. Well, we appreciate you joining the show. Thank you so much for your time. Hopefully people won't blow up your email box now today. <laughs> or to, not today, but when we post this episode, so to speak. But uh, thank you so much for your time and giving us uh, you know, an insight into Mission, Kansas. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you for allowing me to talk about mission. And like I said, I'm jumping in, so I'm still getting familiar with everything, but I'm happy to share if anybody has any questions. Well, thank you so much. And thanks for doing the show. All right. Thanks, Chad. Thanks. Thank you for listening to the Infrastructure Hot Seat Podcast. We hope that this show brought you some insight on relevant topics within the infrastructure world. Please join us every two weeks on Tuesday for the next episode. If you're interested in being a guest on this podcast, please set up a 15-minute interview with your host at calendly.com slash chadsmeltzer. 